Yo, what's up? We on the scene live. I'm Pretty Leon. And I'm Carissa Dez, but you already knew that. <laughs> Don't steal my fucking catchphrase. You're not using it. I, I am. I am using it. It's still there. Anyway, we're here with the wonderful, illustrious... Bedhead. Yes, Bedhead. We are at Honey Latte, Honey Latte Cafe. Yeah, yeah, that's right. All right. A show that our friend Emmeline put on. Go, go follow her. So, uh, Bedhead, tell us a little about your music uh, journey and experience and like how you, like, you know, your process. And I, I unfortunately missed your set, I think, but. That's all good. Okay, yeah, I'll, get, I'll, I'll come catch another one for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. There will be plenty more. Okay. My music journey started pretty early when I was about 12 years old and okay. I picked up guitar. Or that's, yeah, that's started how I started. learning how to do that. Mm. I was very inspired by 90s rock music. And yes. Okay. <laughs> you know, emo and punk and all of that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, but I was also really inspired by pop music like mm. Owl City and yeah, yeah, yeah. auto-tuned yes. type it, stuff yeah. that I was growing up with. Yeah. Hello, um, Seattle. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I made all. a lot of indie music uh, okay. in my high school years, and then I transitioned to making SoundCloud music with my Word. friends. We love that. And now we're here in this yeah. beautiful world. That's right. So are you from Portland? Yeah. So I am from Washington, about four hours north. Okay. Uh, right. In the middle of fucking nowhere. Oh, shit. What? I moved out here in September. Oh, oh uh, wow. what, what, part okay. of, what part of Washington did you move from? I moved from LaConnor, Washington, which is again... Is that near Walla Walla, Washington at all? It's a little near there. Really? Yes. That's where I grew up. It's much more... Booneyville than okay. Walla Walla. It's more Booneyville. Okay. <laughs> you grew up in Washington too, though. Walla, Walla. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yeah. That's so crazy. I feel I like so many Washingtonians <laughs> migrate over here. Yeah, because like yeah, there's, get, there's yeah. no <laughs> music scene in, in most of Washington. This is true. So. <laughs> Except for Seattle. I was going to ask about, like, you know, LaConnor? LaConnor? Yes. So there's. Probably not a lot of cloud artists like uh, like you know people making cloud music mm -hmm. out there. Um, was it like was there like a pushback from what you were doing, or did, did you start after? Like you know, yeah. like did you start after you moved? Like what was when? Well, how was how was it trying to do what you loved? In a, you know, in a boonie town like that. Like, I feel like it's probably not. Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, my, my high school, I graduated in a class of about 37 kids. So oh, it was wow. A tiny, okay, definitely wow. more boonie than Walla Walla. Okay. Yeah. And uh, everybody in the town knew each other. Everybody's parents knew each other. Yeah. Um, but everybody knew everything about everything that was going on. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, my God. I hate that. Except my music. I'm a wild Except, child. Oh, so living in a small town. I kept it, kept it on the down low. I didn't show anybody that I was going to school with that I was making music. Really? Wow. Wow, okay. But I'm, I had my friends. I made a friend in middle school named Ian, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Moth Lab. Shout who, out to Ian Moth Shout Lab. out to Moth Lab. <laughs> we were writing rap since middle school in, oh, in yeah. uh, track and field with each other. That's so sick. And then they moved to Bellingham and mm -hmm. met a bunch of people, met a bunch of new artists. And mm -hmm. I ended up getting brought into the team. And those were my people. I was going every weekend from LaConnor to Bellingham. How, how, Nobody how knew about that? it. Okay. It was 30 minute drive. Oh, 30 minutes. Okay. oh that's yeah. it? Okay. Okay. That's not, not too, too bad. bad. All right, cool. Yeah. But Bellingham's I would right too. out by the border. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, the Canadian border. Mm -hmm. The scariest yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, right. Jesus. <laughs> um, so what type of 90s music did you, uh, were you inspired yeah. by? Because you said that you were, grew up listening to that. I Which was fans? really inspired by Nirvana. Okay. Especially. Yeah, of course. Of course. And yeah. Green Day. Mm. Green Day and Nirvana got me to start writing guitar myself and that got me to start writing lyrics myself but I thought I was going to be Kurt Cobain as a kid and that, <laughs> I think we all did that yeah, was I mean, a little detrimental you still can be no no but, Kurt Cobain was too, living, too manly yeah yeah exactly he was a little well he was kind of soft but you know I mean he would oh, wear dresses a little bit funny, he was the most effeminate man I could still call manly yeah yeah yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. I feel like if he was living that. here in Portland and he was still alive that age he would definitely be more on the feminine side Portland because he would be more accepted her. yeah yeah Oh, it would have saved her. 100%. I, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying when you say that. I'm like, I agree. That's my hottest take. Yeah, no, I honestly, I, I, I feel that 100%. And I'm probably the manliest person who grew up as a woman that you'll ever meet. Yeah. <laughs> it's an honor to be in your presence. I'm probably the most feel like me. looking non-binary person you've ever seen. Yeah. I feel like Kurt Cobain and I would definitely, we would have vibed for sure, for sure. You've got um, his vibe. <laughs> Um, so who else inspired you growing up musically? Yeah, I was very inspired. This is kind of funny, but one of the first songs that ever got me into singing for other people and singing loudly and trying to make my voice sound good was the Phineas and Ferb theme song. Yo! <laughs> it was a good one. I, I love bowling for soup as a kid. Yo, 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 let's talk. Yo, straight up. 
like fucking cartoon theme songs was like my introduction to being like, yo, I could do. I don't know why. Right? It just was like, what's new Scooby Doo? That yes. theme song. That's the best Crazy. of all time. Crazy. Top tier. I want to cover that. Like I want to do a Halloween cover band, and like I'm not even gonna do like what was that? S- simple plan. Simple that did, plan. Simple plan yes, that did that. I'm not even gonna make a simple plan cover band. I'm just gonna play that just randomly during a set. It's gonna be like a system of a down cover band. This and is. Then I'm just gonna do s- simple plan yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah. This is rare lore, but I did cover that song. Really? Oh shoot! On, okay. on some headphone microphones, Yo, exclusive. Some earbud microphones back in 2019, just okay. to test out my computer, <laughs> and I released a song on the same beat with different lyrics. But that exists somewhere. Yo, That's what's the Scooby Doo by Ben? I do have a bunch of weird secret projects out there as well like just yeah. random oh, you just gotta find them you gotta dig deep it's uh, people always tell me like they're like yo give me it and i'm like you gotta find it secret <laughs> lore. Yeah, what's your really. what's your secret name uh it's give not very I'll, I'll, I'll give you the first i'll give you the first uh, the first name of the name uh it's baka and then uh what's the other one Oh, I think I have you on SoundCloud. So Baka I Shinji. Baka Shinji. Yeah. Baka, Baka, Baka not Baka, nice. Baka beep boop. Baka, Baka uh, uh, not nice. Doctor Doctor Baka beep boop. That's <laughs> that's my that's my name. Go look it up. DJ Baka. DJ. <laughs> Actually, that's like, DJ Baka does sound pretty. Oh, good, like. Like backwards. What is you know? Baka DJ. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah. yeah. Took me a second. Yeah. <laughs> when you play the worst song ever. <laughs> yeah. 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 Baka shit DJ. <laughs> my shit's trash. <laughs> So how do you think the, I mean, I know it's very different, but how do you think the music scene is different from where you grew up uh, compared to Portland's music scene? Yeah, I kind of have some crazy stories about my area in Washington and upbringing, but, you know, being in the middle of nowhere, we would have to drive to whatever other town had venues that would host us. Yeah. Um, We played a lot of our own shows in Bellingham, Mm -hmm. but we got booked for a show in U District Seattle when I was about 16, and my friends that were performing with me were 14. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. (laughs) We showed up a little overconfident, and I I actually love that. Yeah. Because I was not confident enough to do that at that age, so just like when I see like 15-year-olds out, like actually like on stage and going wild I'm just right. like okay you go you I go like with your U-district confidence great like yeah. you, y'all were 15, 14 16 in the U district well, that's nuts and we got on this lineup with about 20 different artists oh shit we showed up at the venue and I'm feeling anxious because I've never met any of these people outside the internet this is my first show ever and you know we've got some substances going on and yeah, we're yeah. a little dubious as to where they came from yeah yeah and my friends get to perform their set they're the first people to play and I'm supposed to go right after them. Mm-hmm. The minute the microphone hits my hand, someone pulls out a gun. Oh! And everyone tramples each other towards Damn. the door. Damn! It just, started like, a riot! Yes. Like, he's like, everybody, put them up! <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was a scramble <laughs> moment. Let's go tomorrow! <laughs> the motherfucker didn't even shoot. He just said, <laughs> Basically, <laughs> he, I guess it was some um, sort of threat, maybe. I can see you, I can see you on the stage, like, little mini you. And yeah. like, a gun. It's all fun and games until somebody pulls out. Crap. You know what yeah, I'm saying? It really yeah. is. But why you gotta do that? that? Why you gotta ruin it? Within that, I I mm-hmm. realized a lot about um, my plans at the time to move to Seattle and be yeah. Kurt Cobain and to mm-hmm. make You're music. Like, okay, you like the action. I do. Yeah. I like the yeah. action. I got scared of the people that I was around, and I realized that I needed to to find people that were closer to you know who I was as a person and my values. Sure. And I realized there was a lot of you know untalked about abuse going on in certain circles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And you know you gotta you gotta follow your heart to where it's gonna be the most comfortable, and that's yeah. this for me. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I really love that because, you know, it doesn't like, I feel like, you know, a lot of people think like punk scenes have to be like super gritty and sketchy and, you know, like, you know, almost, you almost die every time you go to a show or like somebody's kicking you in it's the circle. It's more bit, but punk to care for each it, other. Exactly. It's way more punk to be like, have a community and be cool and safe and care about it, you know, just, just be nice i don't know be if, kind. You, if you want to be a violent punk yeah, yeah. defend your friends yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yo, be motherfucking, go fuck. i know a lot of you motherfuckers out there say you punch nazis i know you don't actually punch For nazis real. punch go, a nazi go fucking punch no. a nazi <laughs> we're, mean, gonna, like, we're gonna get banned <laughs> <laughs> violence is not the answer punch <laughs> violence is 100 the answer sometimes <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean if you're defending yourself mm-hmm. yes yeah but okay so 
yeah, I don't like super violent punk groups, but I also like there's something to, you know, being too soft where it's like I'm trying to mosh or like go up to the front of like a punk show and people are like, hey, we got here first. Yeah, and they're like, me. they're doing this and they're like, you t- you push me, you touch me, you got in my space. And I'm just like, this oh, is a punk show. Yeah, like, at least let me try to get to the front. Like, Yo, that's the part of the game. Times I've, been, I've gotten like thrown into somebody and they're like, what the fuck, <laughs> dude? And I'm like, Bro, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, actually, the last time that happened, I was in Aspen, and uh, there, this motherfucker, uh, I, don't even, I don't even like Young Gravy, but I was seeing Young Gravy live, <laughs> and um, we were on snow, because we were in Aspen, and it's outside, and because everybody was going like this and shuffling their feet, it eventually turned into ice, <laughs> and the motherfucker started moshing, and then it was like oh a whole like, like bowling pin situation, and everyone's grabbing onto each other like this, <laughs> and I'm just getting like thrown around, and everyone's just getting mad at me, because I'm the big black motherfucker that it's like, you know, I'm huge, so I'm slamming in everybody, I'm hurting them. It's I'm the like, tall person I'm problems. so sorry. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm doing my very best, but we're on fucking ice. So let me dance a little too. Exactly. Yeah, you're on thin ice, buddy. I didn't like young gravy, man. I was just I was stuck. I was stuck in there around a bunch of fucking rich white people. You're, you're gonna, gonna have a worse right time out. if you're standing still I don't know why you just didn't slide yeah, out of there. I know, I know. I was like, you know what? I just might as well go with the flow. So I was like, <laughs> and there was a little slope, and oh man, it was crazy. Uh, I think so, I don't know if it's worse, but um, dancing and moshing in sand is uh, that's I don't know if it's as that's bad, like before, but it's like ACL. but like if, if you're stuck and like there's people all around you and you can't really move and you're stuck, you'll just like keep going deeper and deeper into the sand. This is true. I went <laughs> I to a stuck. rave on a beach recently for the first <laughs> oh, time. Yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. this is yeah. I think so. Was it the last one last the one last night? Oh, not last night. Oh, not last this night. was a couple of weeks ago. Okay. I'm not up on everything that's happening all the time. There's unfortunately, a lot going on. I try to be. Yeah. I do my best. I'm getting old. I gotta know, get man. more like you. Oh, though, shut no. up. <laughs> take your place. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, so that you take your place. yeah, yeah. Please, yeah, somebody, please, please, take please your somebody, please take my place. Yeah. But uh, so I can go and be, do big things, bigger things, not bigger, but you know, different things. Um, oh, no. We don't know where we parked. Oh, <laughs> that happened to me yesterday. Yeah, it happens to the best of us. It happened you know? after U District too, and we made it out. So Dan, that's that's scary. You always find your way. Exactly. It, it always works out in the end. Find your um, way back. <laughs> Find your way back home. Uh, so, can you tell us what you like about the Portland scene and what you dislike about it? Yeah, or maybe absolutely. just like the music and the music scene in general, I guess. What's amazing is there's not a lot that I dislike about this scene. Um, in fact, being a newcomer to it, it just feels so full of possibility and positivity and brightness. And I know that, you know, every circle has negative energy. Every circle has people that will try and bring you down. Um, But I haven't found that here. And I don't feel like what I'm doing now will bring me towards those people because the energy that I'm giving out is going to attract the same energy back. Yeah, yeah. And I I was going to say, like, I feel like you have a very, like, light and friendly, positive energy. So I couldn't see somebody being like, hey, asshole, like, coming up to you. (laughs) That's not the crowd I want to bring around. I can never see that. Thank you. Um, So I think it's also about the energy that, definitely about the energy that you give out, too. I have a lot of friends who have lived here their whole lives, and they're kind of bitter, and they're like, oh, Portland people are this and that and this and that. Oh, They're yeah. like, you'll see. I've been here for eight years and I've definitely seen that side. But I, you know, just putting yourself around the right people is what's important. You I've know? heard from those people. I've heard the horror stories, you know. But at the end of the day, like, especially when it comes to making music and getting in the room with like minded artists, mm-hmm. you know, you got to put your ego aside and just let it be the moment that it is. Mm-hmm. This is a beautiful yeah. thing to be able to do. Yeah, 100%. Very we are so blessed to just be able to, like, I don't know, like, we're just chilling on the block. Like, there's a lot of places that I've been to. I know people are from. You can't just be chilling on the block outside with, like, camera gear. You can't be, like, oh, no. you know, you're not getting shows like that. Oh, it's just no. crazy. It's crazy because you go to another city and it's, like, you know, it's, like, dangerous. And you might, you know, get checked or, I mean, you might, I mean, you'll get your shit stolen here. Everyone is pretty shicey in that way. But, you know, it's, like, I think a lot of people come here to this city. I want to say with good intentions, you know. I, I feel like it, I feel like a lot of people come here with good intentions. Like I feel like you know people are esca- escaping religious persecution and you know just like shitty vibes in other cities and stuff. And they're trying to cultivate you know a community out here, you know that's positive and friendly and stuff. So absolutely, yeah. I've, seen, I've seen that ups and like the bad and the good. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel, you know, I made this move out here and a large part of what factored into that was being able to be more true to myself and to express myself the way I wanted to with a new crop of people. And, you know, like I said earlier, there's always going to be the, the detractors. There's always going to be the, the 
people that want to do you wrong. Yeah. But people try like, to throw you off your this game. This is really a beautiful place to find about people that. that care about you and that, that care about who you really are. This is a place where we can facilitate growth within each other. And I'm grateful for that. Yeah, yeah. fuck the haters. Fuck the haters. <laughs> oh, yeah, right here. We're doing big things here, and we're not worried about that small we're stuff. Okay. Yeah. I am worried about it. This we'll stop worrying about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bonk. Like some fucking reheated shit. Bonk. Um, so that's what you dislike. You tell us what you like and dislike about the Portland music scene. Um, <clears throat> how do you see the Portland music scene evolving in maybe like 20 years from now? Like, what do you, 20 years from now, what do you see? Yeah, what do you see for the future out. of music yeah, in general, especially Portland? Assuming, <laughs> far out, dude. What would you like it to look like? That's yeah, yeah. So that's my uh, assuming, flying cars and shit, playing assuming your music. Assuming the world survives oh. that long. <laughs> Assuming, yeah, yeah. <laughs> assuming we're all still if here, we're still not here. like a civil war or some crazy. If we're show. still not, not, if we're still in this, us. if we're not in a different dimension by then, <laughs> like what do you see? What would I you think, expect to see? You know, I think that there's a big resurgence of organic instruments. I think that there's a big resurgence of guitars and live drums happening right now. And I think that Portland has been a beautiful place to facilitate electronic music and dancey, ravey, EDM, hard style, as well as rap music and pop music. But mm-hmm. I think it's all going to coincide and I think within 20 years we're going to have completely new genres being built out of the bare essentials of mm-hmm. everything we know now and reconstructed from the ground up and that process is already starting. We yep. saw Nick Pants tonight who was playing some of the craziest breakbeat shit ever oh. with a live mm-hmm. drummer. I love yeah. that. That's sick as fuck. Shout out Nick Pants. Shit. Yeah. Like, I mean favorite. I had it until Emmeline told me I hadn't even heard of uh, Glasscore yeah. before. I mean it makes sense new but the, <laughs> yeah it's like these new little subgenres. I don't know if Portland's making them, but I love that for us because um, we got to keep day. keep evolving. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. Um, do you want to shout out your socials? Yeah, I can be found at Bedhead2001 on most socials, but on Instagram, you got to put a period before those numbers. That's about Word. it. Word. Hell yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, yes, of course. This has been On The Scene Live. I'm pretty Leon, but you already fucking knew that. And I'm Carissa Des. What and you I'm know about? Head. I don't know. I need to think of something new. All right. We out. Thank you so much. You're great. Awesome. Yeah.